Everything on a network starts with and ends with an address. And more than likely, that address will either be your IP address or your MAC address. So let's look and see where we can identify our host's network information. Let's have a terminal up now and run a quick what is IP command. And as we can see, it basically just shows us our protocol information. So what we're looking for here is to run this command, which actually replaces the if config command on Linux. To get our full address information, we can use the IP address or IP adder or IPA commands. They all do the same thing, just different short forms. So let's run IP address now and see what it shows. And just for good measure, I'll also demonstrate with the IPA command that it will actually provide the same output. Cool. Let's review what we see here with our first device now, the loopback or LO device. That's our local host or also known as us. That's our actual system. The link field is our Mac address known as our physical address. And we can see it's zeros across the board and it has an IPv4 address of 127.0.0.1. And that is our machine to send traffic to itself, such as hosting a server, maybe on port 8080. INET6, that's our IPv6 address for our loopback address here. And we won't pay too much attention to that from here on out because it's not really used and we're not going to be using it at all inside of our lab. Look at our second device now as ENS5. So this is our network adapter, our Ethernet adapter really, and has a MAC address of 0A193F0BE8D3. Its INET or IPv4 address is 10.10.0.6, but note that there is a slash 24 at the end of that now. And that's the CIDR notation, noting the subnet mask value. And I'm going to have a chart here now on the right hand side to reference back and forth as we go over this. So as we can see that a slash 24 CIDR notation network is actually providing a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 which means that the first 24 bits of the IP address are used to identify the network, that 10.10.0 portion. And then we have the remaining eight bits, which provides values from zero to 255 for host addresses. Now, remember, we have to subtract that by two. And that's because the network ID is actually 10.10.0.0. So that, that zero is used, we can't use that. And then the broadcast address, which is 10.10.0.255, always the last, the final digit of 255, a maximum value, that's the broadcast address. So we have 254 host addresses that can be used within this slash 24 range, dot six being us. And this gets easier to recognize over time, so don't worry too much about the mental gymnastics that you have to do to kind of divide these things around. As you first start experiencing IP addresses, you're going to be referencing charts and calculators quite often, and then it starts to become second nature, for most of the addresses that you're commonly seeing. But if you're, again, not interacting with it much, that information will kind of disappear out of the head. So what's most important is really just to understand that we have an IP address, and then we have a CIDR notation that actually represents a subnet mask. And then we can use that information to reference what is the network ID portion, and then be able to determine how many host IDs are on that network portion. Okay, and we can also get a better view of just one device and we can do the IPA show command and we can choose the device we want like ENS5 for example and that actually gives us a nice cleaner view we don't have to worry about other devices like our loopback address and such if we just want one device information okay great so there's one other area for us to look at and that's our host name our host name is actually our DNS name and we can find that with the host name command itself which actually is coming from the cat Etsy host name file so let's run that now, hostname. We can see IP, tag 10, tag 10, tag 0, tag 6. And if we go ahead now and cat the Etsy hostname file as well too, we can get that direct information inside there. So let's see what's inside of cat Etsy hostname. We can also go ahead and run the hostname tag i command, lowercase i. And if we go ahead and run that command right now, it's actually going to give us our full address. So our IPv4 and IPv6 address. Here we go. And if we just wanted the IPv4 address, we could run hostname tag I, but capital, and we'll just get the IPv4 address. And that's kind of handy instead of sifting around through IP address information or IPA show adder and stuff. That's nice and clean if we need that IP address. And then there's another important area to take a look at that we saw when we were looking for the hostname file, and that's just Etsy hosts. 
And this file is actually pretty important because it actually tells which host name to resolve per IP address first before going to a DNS server. So if I make a request to localhost, my hosts file will be checked first and it will know and tell my system that yes, localhost is 127.0.0.1. And then if there are any conflicts, it might try to dial out to a DNS server, but that's the first IP address it will try to resolve to first. And this can be really common for like development environments where maybe we have a custom in-house server for a specific purpose that we're testing or building and maybe we want our users to go inside the browser and just type in my server and it will just resolve to something like 192.168.1.100 right away instead of going to a dns server cool so that's really the basics of getting your ip address information and hostname information